From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Amdarian in Broadwater County. Behind me, you can see some of the damage from the Deep Creek Canyon fire. I'll have the latest on the progress fire crews are making and on the plans to turn the fire back over to local authorities. Police are investigating a bomb threat that evacuated this town pump in Butte. I'm Caitlin Aguilas and I'll let you know what happened and if more bomb threats are likely in the future. I'm Gabby Crevett and coming up I'll let you know why it's even more important this summer that you arrive early before your flight. Good advice there, Gabby. Look at that sun coming up over southwest Montana today. It is 630 on your Thursday. Chet Lehman, I'm Holly Brantley. Chet, already outside. How's it feel out there? It's lovely out here right now. Uh, upper 50s uh, here in Tropical Four Corners, 57 degrees. Uh, you saw the sun coming up on our community hospital of Anaconda ICAM in the uh, Butte area. Uh, I think uh, next couple of days are going to be really nice here in southwest Montana. We had a few clouds in the overnight, keeping temperatures fairly mild. You can see that. Butte 47, 55 in Dillon, 49 in Ennis, uh, 10 degrees cooler in West Yellowstone. Uh, as far as your day goes, as uh, we uh, put this into motion, Bozeman going to warm up into the low 80s. It'll be cooler than it was uh, yesterday for Butte. Uh, I'm going to go optimistic and say we'll reach 80. In reality, it's going to be those upper 70s with uh, just some partly cloudy skies. Uh, cooler temperatures in store for us tomorrow and then much warmer temperatures by the middle of next week. We'll take a look at uh, what those record breaking potentials are uh, in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chet. Well, first here, a 55 year old Bridger man has been arrested on charges of starting the Robertson Draw fire south of Red Lodge. John Lightburn of Bridger has been arrested on two felony charges, negligent arson and criminal mischief. Carbon County Sheriff says Lightburn has been taken to the Gallatin County Detention Center. He's being held on a $7,500 bond. The Robertson Draw fire has burned more than 29,000 acres as of yesterday. The fire is 53% contained. 365 firefighters are on scene battling it. Charging documents say Lightburn was a dirt bike rider and he started the fire after spilling gas everywhere while riding on trails closed to motor vehicles. Meantime, the Deep Creek Canyon fire near Townsend is now 90% contained and authorities are starting to scale back their response. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian takes us to some of the land scorched by the fire and explains what's next. Here in the Deep Creek Canyon, you can see some of the hillsides that were blackened when heavy winds drove the fire last week. Since then, crews have been hard at work trying to get containment lines built around the fire while conditions weren't as dangerous. We've had a, you know, a big team on a, on a slightly smaller incident, so we're able to get out and put boots on the ground all the way around and actually put a fire out instead of doing this transition from team to team to team like it is from years past on some of these bigger fires. On Wednesday, firefighters were focusing on the fire's northwest edge, trying to secure the perimeter and contain hot spots. The challenge with this incident has been that on the north side of the fire, it threw uh, a huge number of spots way out in front of the fire. There's no containment line because you can't just draw it around every circle and every spot. The Deep Creek Canyon fire destroyed three residences and four other structures. Leaders say they were able to prevent additional structure loss after the fire's dramatic wind-driven growth last Tuesday. They estimate the fire was held about a mile and a half from the Grassy Mountain subdivision. The conditions are horrific. Uh, this year nice and dry, so it can move really fast. The fire left more than three miles of power lines on the ground. Vigilante Electric Cooperative reported Wednesday that they had installed 52 out of a planned 58 replacement poles, and they planned to have power to Grassy Mountain restored on Thursday. The Type 1 incident management team is set to hand command back over to local authorities on Thursday evening. In Broadwater County, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Now, at its peak, more than 400 people, 50 people were fighting the fire, but more than 100 have already been released. Although the response is scaling down, people may still see smoke from the smoldering stumps and logs for the next few weeks. Well, 634 now, there is yet another twist in the Republican-led legislature's ongoing battle against the Montana Supreme Court. The legislature says it is withdrawing its subpoenas that had requested internal court communications. But the court administrator says not so fast. MTN's Mike Dennison explains. Republicans at the legislature issued the subpoenas in April, asking for internal Supreme Court emails and other documents. 
They were attempting to find out if high court justices had expressed opinions on GOP-passed laws that might come before the court in a constitutional challenge. But the high court blocked those subpoenas until it could rule on whether they're legal and has been weighing the case based on written arguments from both sides. But late Tuesday, the Attorney General, acting as the legislature's lawyer, said the legislature is now withdrawing those subpoenas and that the case therefore is moot and should be dismissed. Chief Deputy Attorney General Chris Hansen said the legislature would like to negotiate with the court on the release of court documents. But Supreme Court Administrator Beth McLaughlin, who sued to block the subpoenas, says the case should not be dismissed. Her lawyer, Randy Cox, told MTN News Wednesday he'll likely file an objection that will ask the Supreme Court to rule on the issue anyway. He said there's no real direction in Montana law on the scope of a legislative subpoena and that it should be decided in case the issue comes up again. Meanwhile, the chair of the Republican-created Legislative Committee investigating possible bias within the judiciary says its efforts are not over. Senator Greg Hertz of Polson said Tuesday it still wants to look at certain court records and that withdrawing the subpoenas will help advance that cause. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now, the special committee investigating the judiciary has a two-year budget of $285,000. Well, now to the mining city. Butte Silver Bow police are looking for information on a bomb threat that took place Tuesday evening. MTN's Caitlin Aguilas took a look at what happened. Butte Silver Bow law enforcement are looking for a person suspected of a bomb threat at Town Pump on 531 South Montana Street. Officers received a call that warned a bomb had been placed near the store. Town Pump was evacuated and the area was cordoned off. Officers were able to observe a bicycle that had some sort of container attached to it and they were unsure if there was wires coming from it or not. So they did uh, notify the administrator on a call and then uh, we did notify the bomb squad out of Helena. Lewis and Clark County Under Sheriff said that the explosives unit helps when they are needed and that the device looked credible enough to be a bomb. They sent us some pictures and our technicians looked at those pictures and felt that they should go go there and take a look at the, the situations, which, which they did. And my report back from them was, uh, it was, it was a non-explosive uh, apparatus of some sort. According to the United States Bomb Data Center Explosives Incident Report, bomb threats decreased 25% in 2020. There were a total of 5,482 suspicious and unattended package incidents, a decrease of 28% since 2018. According to George Skulicic, Butte Silverboat Police take threats like these seriously. We're looking at video from the store and video from uh, other location to see if we can determine who may have left. It was strapped to a bicycle, so we're trying to determine who may have uh, dropped off the bike there at the town pump store. In Butte, Caitlin Aguilas, MTN News. Summer travel is heating up at the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. MTN's Gabby Crevett tells us the airport director says travelers should expect lines next time they head through security. The golden rule of traveling has always been arrive early to the airport before getting on your flight. Now we're learning why this summer that rule is even more important than ever. It's a, a very strong recovery here at our airport and we're expecting that to continue through the rest of the year. The Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport is back to breaking its own records now that residents and tourists feel more comfortable traveling again. So far this summer, what we've seen is uh, May was up about 18% over the record May set in 2019. Uh, right now we're expecting June to be up uh, somewhere between 30 and 40% over record traffic levels in June of 2019. Airport Director Brian Springer says with traffic levels rising at this rate, arriving two hours before your flight is even more critical. He adds the nationwide worker shortage might also result in longer security lines at airports locally and across the country. When you have this large of an increase in passengers and a labor shortage, it just creates some uh, additional challenges. TSA recommends travelers pack smart in order to help make the lines move quickly. That means securing carry-on items, ditching the bear spray and camping fuel, and enrolling in TSA pre-check if you qualify. A TSA spokesperson told media on Wednesday morning the nationwide labor shortage was being felt in airports across the country. And worst case scenario, travelers may experience longer lines. 
but safety will remain a number one priority. What that means is that we're going to see longer lines at the security checkpoint. We will never compromise security because maybe we don't have as many people as we'd like to see to have every lane open. But keep this in mind, our workers uh, know that they're going to work all the time. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Kravit, MTN News. Well, more news to get to here on Montana this morning, including news of a 12-story building collapsing near Miami. Coming up, eyewitness accounts and rescue efforts that are underway. Plus, here's a look at what's coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. Breaking overnight, a building partially collapses near Miami and rescuers are searching for survivors. We'll have the latest from the scene. Also, the FDA is warning about a rare possible side effect of some COVID vaccines on some young people. What families need to know about this new alert. And Britney Spears says her conservatorship is abusive and she wants her life back. Here are the support she's getting and what's next for the pop star. All that and more at 7.